Racing people recognized it and put special versions under the hoods of many speedsters. They turned up at Le Mans and Bonneville and Watkins Glen. One set a new closed track record at Chrysler's own proving grounds, where the high banked curves make steering unnecessary up to 140 miles per hour. Chrysler engineers, as a matter of hobby, did a lot of thinking up and souping up, and the race addicts were happy. In the opinion of some race car addicts, that firepower engine redeemed the whole automotive industry. I'm Bob Roger, chief engineer for Chrysler and Imperial. As you know, car manufacturers aim to build the cars most people want to drive. At Chrysler, we engineer for maximum silence, the softest possible ride, automatic, effortless performance. But race buffs want what you might call pure car. If you have ever ridden in a racer, or even heard one, you know it leaves a lot to be desired. It sounds like the end of the world, it rides like a rock, and it fits like a shoe a couple of sizes too small. On the other hand, it's unique, and it's exciting, and it's a basic automotive experience. We've deliberately engineered a lot of this out of American cars. But special versions of our firepower engine got Chrysler a name in racing at a time when quite a few people were developing a yen for this basic driving experience. Some were beginning to buy the little domesticated European racers called sports cars. They put up with discomfort and inconvenience and enormous service problems in order to get what you might call a driver's kind of car. It was a trend and an engineering challenge that was difficult to resist. We had the engine. Why not develop a car that would be a sports car in every important way, but still be a car that an American could live with? We went to work at this, and in early 1955, we released our first model, the Chrysler 300. 300 for horsepower. The grill of the first 300 was borrowed from the Imperial. The emblem was a racer's checkered flag, and the Firepower V8 had a full race camshaft and dual four-barrel carburetors. 300 horsepower that could deliver more than 135 miles per hour. That first 300 series took the NASCAR Grand National Stock Car Championship as well as the AAA Stock Car Championship. It burned up the sophisticated sand of Daytona Beach to win the NASCAR National Speed Trial Championship and the NASCAR National Women's Speed Championship. In single runs and competitive events, the 300 became a legend in its own roaring time and the start of a venturesome revival in both the business and the hobby of cars that is still on the rise. The 56 model enlarged the legend with more victories. There were minor changes of trim and major changes of horsepower. The 300B repeated most of the first 300's triumphs and added some new ones of its own. The new 300C had a grill all its own and the first dual headlights on a production automobile. The big air-cooled brakes were husky. The emblem was new. So was the sheet metal, but the basic 300 commodity was still record-smashing power. The 300C, as well as the D and others to follow, rode on front torsion bar suspension. If the front view of the C was its most distinctive, the rear was still the one most motorists could see. The differences between the E and the F were more apparent, not only in styling, but in the resolute annual increase in acceleration and power. The F, for 1960, had the first standard bucket seats in the big car market, a central console and a tachometer. Daytona Sand, the 300F took the first six places in the 1960 Flying Mile event. It made the fastest run ever recorded by NASCAR for a production automobile. And soon the 300G came along to break all records except that one high-speed run. The 
300 idea is the idea of a powerful, responsive, nimble automotive machine. Styling has never been the primary consideration. 300s have been Chrysler's, often severely simplified and outside trim, and distinguished by grill and emblem and by their unique interiors. The 300 engineering hobby goes right on. So does the enthusiasm that gets to everybody who builds the 300 on the line. And the enthusiasm is still concentrated on the remarkable machinery of the 300. That's the way it's been each year. And that's the way it is with the new one for 62. The 300H.